Welcome back to project 63. Today we're going to look at the gearbox casing that we're going to use in the car along with the modifications that we're going to do to the gearbox casing and transmission parts both dog box and synchro mesh. So we've got both types of gearbox here and we're going to show you the difference. Okay, now we've got the gearbox casing back from aqua blasting. Now I say aqua blasting because aqua blasting is just high pressure water. If you say send your gearbox casing away for any other form of blasting, be very, very suspicious because any material that they're going to blast at the gearbox casing can impregnate into the aluminium and you won't know it's there then when you fill it with oil and the oil starts sloshing around the particles will mix with the oil and wreck the engine so just be careful if you're having gearbox casings cleaned make sure you use the correct process anyway moving on this is a 22g 1128 4 synchro gearbox casing so originally this gearbox came with the remote change diff housing on it. So there's the diff housing and then normally the remote gearbox change goes back this way and that then brings the gear stick up right next to your hand inside the car. So there's a big hole in the floor. We didn't want to cut a hole in the floor so we found an old magic wand gear change diff housing We've lightly skimmed five to 10 foul off there. I can't remember whether it's five or 10 foul, but anyway, enough to push that further in. So then that was bolted up and torqued onto the gearbox face, like so. And then we sent it away and we had the whole line board back to original size, because obviously once we machined some material off there, it closed the dimension up so it's now back to the original size and these faces lightly flicked up so that the diff side covers will fit. So now we've got a very, very rare gearbox, which is a four synchro gearbox with a magic wand gear change. So when we put this back in the car now, we can use all the original mounts, the original hole in the floor and everything will fit. Okay, when, when you do take the five to 10 foul off here and move this in, you would think maybe there won't be enough clearance in these holes, but the holes are most probably 30, 40 thou bigger in diameter than the screw that you're going to use. So even if you moved it in 20 thou, you'd still have enough clearance in the bolt holes to get the side covers on. So you won't have any problems there. Obviously there's a few things to look out for on a gearbox casing. Make sure the sump plug's not got the threads ripped out. Make sure the idler gear bearing housing's the right size. We're not too bothered about that because we're going to put roller bearing drop gears on. So the spindle that presses in there will press in there anyway. Always go around the gearbox, check for any undulations. We normally take a Dremel to polish off things like this one. Here, look, the big phrase just here. That one's dressing back because it's asking for a crack to start from it. Always have a look across here to make sure that this section of the gearbox is not cracked. And then again, really just go round all the threads, make sure all the threads are good. On this one also, we will be drilling the engine to gearbox mounting holes out to the 516 larger diameter. Quarter UNF as standard, we'll take them out to 516 UNF and then drill the block. Okay, so that's the gearbox casing now covered. We're now going to look at the gear set. So we'll just move this over to one side. Right, so this one is the six piece synchro mesh straight cut gear kit. And what you'll notice is the difference between the two first motion gears. Firstly, you'll notice that the gear teeth are a good 30% wider on a dog box, which is this one compared to the synchro mesh. We'll just pop them next to each other and you'll see the physical 
difference between the two. The next difference you'll notice is this one has obviously got the dogs on. That is why it's called a dog box. This one has got little tiny dogs on here which work in conjunction with the synchro mesh. So what we'll do is we will show you a bought ring or a synchronizing ring, whichever you want to call it. And how this works is it sits loosely on the gear like that in its natural form. Running next to it, you would normally have a synchro hub. This is a first gear synchro hub, but it, it'll show us what we need to see. And inside you'll see the three gaps here, here and here that locate on the three dogs on the bolt ring like so. So what will happen is the outer track of the hub will actually move over like so. Now you'll see there's the inner track this is the outer track and what it does when it moves over it gets hold of the three little legs in the gaps here and pinches them like so and then it pushes the bolt ring up the gear so then the bolt ring slides up the gear it grips and now you've got the outer track here on the bolt ring which is pushed up tight on the gear so now the gear has become part of the inner track of this and then the outer track drops over the dog teeth like so and that's in gear so now you've got a direct drive there right so what we'll do is we'll now show you this in situ sorry this is a dirty old gearbox but we've just pulled it off the rack just to show you this but what you'll find is here's the gear which in effect is that gear which we've just shown you the bolt ring face and the dog teeth and this is the synchro hub and what actually happens when you change into first gear is I'll do this with a screwdriver just so that you can see what happens it actually rolls over to there so what's happened now is this hub has gone over the top of the bolt ring which slows this gear down and then the internal teeth just here lock onto the teeth just there so there is your drive now that's into first gear when you change into second gear excuse the screwdriver that's neutral and that's second gear so you'll see now you're using the opposite side of the synchro hub to go over the second gear dog teeth and now you've got drive into the second gear and that's how it works first second third fourth same thing happens now with a dog box you will find it's very similar but instead of having the synchro hubs you've got a direct dog engagement so this is basically the hub that was just here but now instead of this one sliding over the top of that you've got a dog engaging on a dog so it's called dog engagement so to go into gear that goes over there once that tightens up there is your drive you'll also notice on these that the dogs on both the gear and the hub have got a taper on them as soon as it starts to pick up it will actually pull the dog hub into the gear to hold it in place so it can't slip out now because once you've got the drive on the tapers lock in together so once you take your power off the engine to change gear that happens it moves over and then it drops into the next gear and that's how the dog engagement gear kit works in relationship to your synchro mesh gearbox so synchro mesh has the taper on every gear and the dog teeth dog box has the dog on with the dog ring to lock in gear every time a dog box really is very similar to a motorbike gearbox in as much as 
it is a crash box. There's no synchro mesh. So on a road car, you will be not advised to use that because it is quite aggressive. For road use, this is the best option because obviously it's very smooth on the gear change. You've got your synchro mesh, which stops the crunching of the gears. This is a lot more of an agricultural gearbox. Obviously, you've got direct bump, 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 bump. Whereas this, the synchro hub rides over the port ring, which gives you a nice smooth change. You get no gear crunching. So yes, for a road car, synchro mesh. For a race car, etc. Go dog box every time. Okay, well what we'll break on this one is, obviously the gear teeth are only two thirds the width of those, so there's a lot more stress on the narrower gear. Biggest problem on the synchro mesh is these. They're only made really for a road car, and if you start crashing up and down the gearbox, going from top down into second, this is taking an awful lot of bashing. What I have seen on a race, car using a synchro mesh gearbox these will wear out within two or three laps either they wear out or they split open along the oil groove line once they're broken no synchro mesh and then disaster parts start going in the oil end of oil pump end of engine so there we go that's the gear set and the gearbox mods we're going to do and uh, we'll be back to you soon with some more.